Hello, I'm Hans Beesmer, and I've been a programmer for over 40 years, and I'm using Ford. Ford is a deceivingly simple language that is notoriously hard to master, but it enables me to make more complex programs, and faster than I ever could in C. In this series I'm breaking down some of the most intriguing projects I took upon me, and today I'm doing Ford myself. So what is this Ford? Ford is a very simple language, and for that reason it uses a concept called reverse Polish notation. If you ever used an HP calculator, you already are familiar with the concept. It works using a stack. So what's a stack? Imagine having a tube with the exact diameter of a dime, which is closed at one end. If you throw a dime in, it will drop to the bottom. When you drop another one in, it lands on the top of the first dime. So let's say we drop in a few more. If you want to get the dime out, the first one that drops out is the last one you put in. And then the one you put in before comes out. If you want the very last dime in the tube, you'll end up with a handful of dimes. Now imagine a stack with numbers and a computer language that lives by consistently applying three simple rules. If it's a command, execute it. If it's a number, throw it on the stack. If it's neither, issue an error message. And let's elaborate on that by introducing you to two simple Ford commands. Plus, which takes two numbers from the stack, adds them and places the sum on the stack. Dot, which takes a number from the stack and displays it. Now consider this. 5, 7, plus, dot. So what happens? 5 isn't a command, it's a number, so it ends up on the stack. 7 isn't a command, it's a number, so it ends up on the stack as well. Plus is a command, it takes 5 and 7 from the stack, adds them and places 12 on the stack. Dot is a command, it takes 12 from the stack and displays it down. Now you say, that's a calculator, that's not a language. But Ford has a facility to make macros. To make a macro you issue a column. That puts it into macro mode. Following the column is the name of the macro. Let's say add plus show. Yes, the macro name can consist of any set of characters as long as it doesn't contain any white space. Then you simply add any set of commands and finish it up with the semicolon. That compiles a return command and ends the macro mode. And that's it. Now we can issue 5, 7, add plus show and the macro is played back. Just as if we issued plus dot. But for it has a second stack, the return stack. When you play the macro, it throws its current location on the stack, jumps to the macro, plays it back. And since the last instruction is the return command, it will grab that original location and continue execution from there. So how does that work? Let's make another word, uh, add 7 plus show. Let's define that as colon, add 7 plus show, 7, add plus show, semicolon. Now we issue the command 8 at 7 plus show. So what happens? We throw 8 on the normal stack. We throw our current location on the return stack. And now we jump to add 7 plus show. That one throws 7 on the stack. We throw our current location on the return stack. Now we jump to add plus show. Plus is a command. It takes 8 and 7 from the normal stack, adds them and places 15 on the normal stack. Dot is a command. It takes 15 from the stack and displays it. Return takes our previous location from the stack and jumps back. Return takes our previous location from the stack and jumps back. And we're right back where we started. That's for it in a nutshell. 
So now you know what we're dealing with here. I must admit I probably made a lot of Ford enthusiasts very unhappy. Just because I didn't use the correct words. And that's typical for the Ford community. Why can't we all just get along? I'm Hans Beesmer and this was another episode of Back and Forth. <laughs>